afternoon, good evening, all. It's Bear here. And I'd like to welcome you to my YouTube channel, A Box of Knowledge. A channel I'm creating not only to delve in and bring awareness to the realities complex trauma creates and the, and the environments and, and the societal aspects that create traumatic trauma in our world, but also to explore the understandings of the mechanisms and to explore ways of healing and develop ways of healing and understanding. Now this is the next video in the adoption series. And it's going to have some similarities to the previous one of, of the reality of meeting adoptive family parents' expectations and how it changes in us. But I want to delve into some more defined aspects of the adoptive family's expectations to give some real-world parameters. Now... This is going to push some buttons, especially in the demographics that I will be raising. And it's not my intention. This is not going against those demographics. It's just explaining a price tag that we live in experience. But I will also not apologize for going and talking about these demographics because of the reality those requirements, those expectations have on a child that's been removed, taken and trafficked or whatever, however that infant comes into that world of being placed for adoption. And I make no apologies for this. And part of the motivation of this is in, in other previous videos with the cross-cultural adoption aspect is, you know, the, the gentleman that is was raising this, you know, what the world issue with a white man raising a black baby is the religious component was where the primary triggering aspects of that because it was divined by God using his words that he do this. It was preordained, you know, it was by God's design that he is doing this, that he's choosing to adopt a baby or an infant from another race, another color and so forth. That expectation is what that infant needs to meet. And when that infant doesn't, and I promise you, that infant won't. At some point, that infant, as, it, as they grow into a child, will not meet those expectations because they can't. No one can meet another person's expectations completely. That's when problems arise and the whole sense of the adoption, that child becomes a threat to those beliefs. It's the same, like I, I was adopted as a religious thing. My adopted parents are of a completely different heritage, cultural heritage to mine. And there is a highly religious component, old school religion, press, old school Presbyterian, in the, the, their beliefs of why, of what was required and what was to be met. And that shaped their expectations that were placed upon me that I had to interpret to try to become a person that they would want to make my home environment safe. I epically failed. And I know personally of a lot of adoptees that we epically fail no matter how hard we try. And that conditions in us one of the hardest things for a person to live with is when you know that no matter how hard you want, how much you want to and how hard you try, you will never be good enough. You will never meet their expectations. And that's what annihilated my two long-term relationships. I have had, I've only had two relationships in my life, really. I've had tries that have never even developed into a relationship. And I've been single now for over 10 years. It's this thing of because I've not found a way to resolve that because I can't create the ecology within my environment to learn how to meet and develop what is required to be able to meet those expectations for my biological person of who I actually am. I have all the ideas and all the desires and all the wishes and wants, but my nervous, my body doesn't know how to respond. That's the fundamental changes that this kind of a situation in adoption creates. Because we were bred into a situation that we could never succeed. 
There is no way an infant will meet these heightened expectations. I spent many, many years, and this is one of the ones I'm going to probably get a bit of flack about, I spent many, many years opposing same-sex couples' right to adopt. I'm not anti-gay in any way, shape, or form. I have, like the old cliche, I have gay friends. I don't, it's got nothing to do with being anything against trans or gays. I don't have an issue with it. But I do have an issue with the expectations that that infant will prove to a world that you are a viable family source. And there's no way around it. And if you, if you have attended pride marches and stuff, which I have done in the past, and you see a gay couple with an infant in a stroller with a t-shirt on, I'm proud my, both my mummies are gay, I'm proud both my daddies are gay, so forth. That is what I'm talking about. That expectation that the world has to accept that you are a viable family falls on that infant and young child to, who's going to go to school who's going to have to answer questions that they are not going to be able to answer. That is the expectation that is met. And what that fundamentally teaches when we can't meet those expectations is there's nothing we can do that will ever be good enough. And when an adopted child hits that point of giving up, of accepting that we will never be good enough, we have one or two paths that we will follow. One, we will make people accept us whatever, you know, however we want, that aggressive path, that dominant path. And there's often self-medication and everything else that goes with it, drinking and so forth and so forth. Or we will withdraw. My adopted brother went that path, I withdrew. Both our lives have not been what I would call observationally successful. And there's a lot of issues associated but my adopted brother is heavily in the fog, and if you challenge anything around adoption, good luck. But because I withdrew and because of what happened in Canada, I've, I've spent all these years looking into the why. But I still, even with everything I've learned and all the knowledge I have, I have not found a way past the knowing that I will never be good enough, no matter how hard I try because I can see it and I know how, to, I can see it in the eyes. I can see it in the mannerisms of who I'm talking with. That is what is taught. That is what fundamentally changes when we don't meet those expectations. And a lot of the reasons for adopting a child come with huge expectations. It could even come from the standpoint of, you know, infertility and miscarriages and all the trauma associated with that within women and within a marriage as their reasons to want to adopt. It can be, well, I wanted to take a child out of this hardship, out of this orphanage and do... There is always a reason. An adoptive, prospective adoptive parents, you need to really understand that reason and look at it. And what do you expect that child to fulfill? And if you're determined to push ahead... Because there are children that do need permanent homes. I'm not saying there isn't. But you need to understand is you need to provide that infant and child with markers of achievement so that they know they have met those expectations. And words will never do it. You can say all these wonderful words to the cows come home will change diddly squat. It comes down to the pheromone, to the energy you express in hugs and gratitude and moments of, of close interaction and what the infant and child feels. That is the marks of attachment and connection and belonging. That is the marks of I have achieved meeting your expectations. When you both feel the warmth, when that pride is real and not just meaningless words, that is what is needed. An adopted parent can say, I'm proud, I respect you, and I blah, 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 till the cows come home, won't do squat. You've got to appease. From an infinite, from an adopted adoptee's perspective, you have to appease the lifting up out of the box and being held and belonging and welcomed into a family. That is how we know that we are part of. Some adoptees get that. Some adoptees experience that. Majority of us don't, to varying degrees of, of, of failure, but... 
I guess the main point in this video is understanding that when you know or you are an adopted person who has, you, when we know we, no matter how much we tried, no matter what we've done, we haven't met those needs and what we've perceived those needs are. Yeah, I can say it's not our fault and all this, but I know that we don't, that doesn't touch this. It's the knowing that we need the grace to learn how to appease the emotions linked to not being picked up, up out of that box by our mom. Because that's what's attached to this. That is all the sense of the emotions that is attached to this meeting of expectation. And it's working little by little to appease that. As I said, I mean no disrespect to religions, I mean no disrespect to, to, to same-sex couples or anything. It's around the expectations that you project and the impact that has on the child you adopt. That is what this video is about. And finding and creating discussions and ways to lessen that impact. So as always, please be mindful, please be respectful. And I'll see you next time. Hope.